after the 2020 presidential election, Ron DeSantis boasted that he handled everything so well, the election went off or went on without a hitch. However, it turns out that he's been pushing for election police. And unfortunately, the state legislature has passed this legislation. Now, what does this bill entail? Well, the office would employ election investigators who would not be sworn officers of the law. The measure would ban ranked choice voting for local elections and require election officials to update voter rolls every year. The bill would also increase misdemeanor violations to felonies for collecting more than one vote by mail ballot. Okay, so I need to unpack a few of the things that are mentioned there. I want to actually start off with the, um, you know, updating the voter rolls every year. Understand that they do that knowing that it's very likely that registered voters would be dropped from the rolls. Because it really depends on how they update it, right? Do they update it by sending someone through the mail like a little postcard saying that you need to re-register? If that's the case, a lot of people are gonna be kicked off the voter rolls. And so this is really a way to prevent people from being able to vote. They'll show up thinking that they have the ability to vote because they're registered, but it turns out they're not on the voter rolls. The other thing I wanted to note is the, uh, the bill that would increase uh, misdemeanor violations to felonies for collecting more than one vote by mail ballot. So there are situations in which let's say people living in rural communities, people who might be disabled, they might not be able to go drop off their ballot. And so they'll have a family member or someone close to them drop off the ballot for them. Uh, Florida has banned that. Gee, I wonder why, maybe it could be to create another obstacle for people who wanna vote. And so if anyone's caught submitting their ballot along with someone else's ballot, they could face some serious consequences for that. Now, one of the most controversial penalties for the ballot harvest is for ballot harvesting. The 2021 law made it a misdemeanor for anyone to have more than two ballots, which impacts efforts at churches and community centers to have volunteers gather ballots and deposit them at an elections office or in a drop box. The bill passed this week raises that to felony to a felony punishable with a fine of up to $50,000 and five years in prison. Now the bill also designates $2.5 million for this new office, which will add more bureaucracy to Florida because you know the right wing loves bureaucracy. They're gonna hire 25 of these so-called investigators. Ron DeSantis originally asked for $6 million, but he has secured 2.5 million for this effort. And so Jake, I mean, it's so good that he's doing this because um, as he said, everything went really well with the 2020 election. and uh, But there must be a lot of voter fraud in that state, right? Is there? Is there a lot of voter fraud? No, and what's funny is that there isn't. Uh, and, oh. and the guy who told us that is Ron DeSantis. Hmm, interesting. So in the last presidential election, there was only three cases of voter fraud. Two of them were by Republicans. And so Florida has tens of millions uh, of uh, citizens. So three is a minuscule number. In fact, nationwide, the rate of voter fraud is 0.0000001%. Seems like they just want to make it mm. difficult for people to vote. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, so is it a real issue? We've told you a million times it isn't because of those facts. They're inarguable. Uh, all the right wing ever does is they don't ever cite facts, they just scream louder. Oh, You don't care about voter fraud, right? No, wait, we care about it, you setting up. A quasi police Gestapo that's going around intimidating uh, voters. Now, guys, why is that problematic? You think that in the past, uh, that for example, when they were doing Jim Crow, including in that state, they just said, "Oh, we we hate black people. We're not going to let you vote." No, you, if you don't know, back then they also pretended that it was for legal reasons, and so they would say, "Oh, no, no, we just need a poll test or a literacy test, etc." And so when a black person showed up, they'd give them a near impossible test. And when a white person showed up, they'd give them the easiest test in the world or they would just cheat. But in the in the laws, theoretically, it was supposed to apply the same to white and black people. And But the way that the police and the quasi police enforced it was in a way that was reminiscent of, well, actually predated the Gestapo. And so if you were of a particular race, you got to vote all you want. And everyone knew and it would be enforced when you went, went to vote and you were black. That Gestapo force, that was an unofficial government based on how they, they interpreted the law, would make sure that you didn't vote. So it's not like they're 
being more subtle now, they're doing the same tactics. This is not official police. I don't know what authority they have. It's a quasi election police that doesn't go through the same training or any of the same processes as actual police officers. And so it makes it very easy to do selective enforcement. So, oh my God, the churches. Um, before, they would let the churches do any kind of speeches, even though technically it's not allowed, right? And they would allow them to uh, take what? all, collect all those ballots, etc. And Anna, you're gonna be surprised to find out that's because it was a lot of white churches right. that were driving people towards Republicans. And the minute that the black churches started doing it, also they're like, wait a minute, did you guys know that they're uh, collecting ballots at churches? Right. So how are they going to enforce this? I'll guarantee you two ahead, ahead of time. They will enforce it on the black churches and minority churches, and they'll start to arrest people and intimidate the hell out of them. Will they go to uh, prosperity gospel preachers no. uh, that are right wing and white? Hell no, there'll never be an investigation of any of them. And if there was, if they did one arrest at one of those churches, the entire state would blow up. The right wingers would go nuts. The government tyranny against our beloved church. They're attacking Jesus Christ himself. Where were you when they locked up all the black pastors? Oh No, no, yeah, they're doing voter fraud, right? Yeah, yep, yep. No, I mean, we've already seen these tactics deployed. You know, you mentioned that churches aren't supposed to be giving political speeches. It's not because you're trying to censor these churches, but because they're tax exempt. So a tax exempt organization like a church isn't supposed to be endorsing one political party or a political candidate, but they do it all the time. And there's never any enforcement of that. They never lose their tax exempt status, which is ridiculous. But I think it's also important to, to hear from the individual's election officials who carry out this job. It's not a fun job and you know, at this point, they have to deal with intimidation as a result of the lies coming from right wing candidates who don't have popular messages, but would rather rig the system to their advantage because they're losers. So the Brennan Center for Justice actually polled the election workers and here's what they know. They asked, do you feel that threats against election officials have increased, decreased, or stayed about the same in recent years? And wow, would you look at that, a whopping 77% of them do believe that the uh, threats have increased. Only 22% say it's stayed about the same, and a negligible amount say that it has decreased. Uh, have you been threatened because of your job as a local election official? 17% uh, say yes, which is, you know, I'm glad that it's not more than that, but 17% is still too much. 17% of election workers um, saying that they've been threatened because of their job is insane. Okay, there's more. How much, if at all, do you believe the spread of false information about elections has made your job as an election official more dangerous? Um, about 64% say some, somewhat, and 36% say a lot. Yeah, so guys, part of the reason why you do vigilante uh, violence uh, in this historically, it's, uh, you know, we, we use the word Gestapo because that's exactly what uh, the Nazis did. They began the brown shirts to do vigil, quasi police force to do vigilante violence and intimidate the people that were their political opponents. It's because it's not just the person you're targeting, it sends a message to everyone else. So when they go around being thugs to election workers only in certain districts, it sends a message to election workers, you better be on our side. If not, you're gonna have trouble. And that's why right now they don't feel safe. And so then you send, you start your election police and they go around intimidating people. How do you know that voter fraud is not a real issue? Look, if Putin said uh, these uh, uh, Russians protesting the war in Ukraine, uh, no, I locked them up because I was trying to protect them. There was a 0.0000001% chance they were gonna get hit by lightning. And I, do, I wanted to protect them and I didn't, and by the way, it would be about that much. It would be about the same numbers. Since I didn't want them to get hurt by lightning, I put them in jail. You would say that's absurd, of course it's tyrannical. We know what you're doing. It's the same thing here. They don't care about voter fraud at all. All they're trying to do is use it as an excuse for voter intimidation. Mm -hmm. in, an, in a state that DeSantis said doesn't have to be fixed on elections. He said it worked nearly perfectly last time. So why would you have to spend all this money 
on your election police if it worked nearly perfectly. Because your goal isn't to end voter fraud, it's to start voter intimidation. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.